That's it. All right, let me try to log in one last time. World server does down. Okay, I see how it is. Listen, we need to stall anyway, all right? Because Esfon needs to log on, and we need to get everybody together for the dungeons anyway, all right? So, those servers are down. We might as well just start this and get it done. Let me, before I start this at all, let me take a drink and get started. All right, guys? New pause record? No, there's been one time where I paused the video at one second in. Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I have a rather interesting subject for you today, I think. I'm gonna talk about Classic. I know, crazy, right? So, with all of the Absolutely. updates, we've gotten some information on what's changed and what hasn't, and we're starting to get a pretty good picture of how Classic is shaping up so far. God, I need to fix it's pretty this. close I don't know to why the original. Now. Never However, happened before. there are some confirmed differences. Some of them are in Blizzard's yeah, really control, apologize. and some aren't, and I thought it would make for an interesting video to sort of compile it here for you. Not okay. just from the blue posts, too. This is from the perspective of someone who's been playing since March of 2005 and has seen the game change over it's the like past decade. played longer than and me, hopefully and I, I played for like 15 years. That maybe you haven't thought of yet. Look at that gear, I'll also dude. be ranking them as I think it's more interesting. Let me it will it be in the order of substantiality, increasing as the video progresses. Okay. So, starting at number 10 here, we have add-ons and their usage. Now, it was confirmed that the add-on system is already going to be different. Basically, it's a mix of the old and the new to try and make it authentic, but at the same time, introduce some limits since there were fewer restrictions in Thank vanilla. God. Typically, in the realm of automation, with the presence of one-button rotations. See? Going See? past that, though, over the years, add-ons have grown just like the game has. Look at this! Look at this frame, man! Oh my God! Dude, I love this. Like, whenever I see videos like this, they're absolutely amazing. Like the screenshot. And people have become more adept I used to at have creating this one too. them, and some that existed only after Vanilla's original run will surely see a release for the official remake. The more add-ons you have, the better of a they're raider you are. They're almost limitless, but possibly the biggest one in regards to the balance of the game will be the boss mods. Oh, now, yeah. Now, these did exist in Classic, but as I've yeah. said, these authors have become much better over time. And have had nearly 15 they should years make it to where you can't have boss mods. Ultimate raid helper no boss mods in classic. And going past that, Period. there was actually a stigma Zero. against mods for a short while there, if you can actually believe that. I think this was more during World the early Warcraft stages of Chiefs. classic. I need to go to that website. There were people who thought that these unlicensed add ons were essentially cheats. Yeah, I take a look at that. And they refused to download them. Sometimes they thought that they were against the terms of service and that they'd be banned by Blizzard. Accurate. And other times it was more of a matter of pride. In disgust, they'd question the ability of those dirty add-on users. Like, ugh, you need an add-on to tell you what to do with this boss? My skill is my add-on, okay, buddy? I used to say that until... Siegecrafter Blackfuse, I believe. Because I needed, I needed an add-on for Siegecrafter Blackfuse, but all the way up until then, I never played with add-ons. I never had any DBM or anything. It didn't matter if he was the dude who'd somehow die within yep. the first five seconds that of was, every fight. That, no, it's not me. He that may was have not been me. the Glass Joe of World of Warcraft. I would never die. But he was a purist, damn it. Never, never Some would of you die. may remember the drama with the old quest helping add ons. Oh, Waypoints yeah. Waypoints to mark the quest's locations. Yep. What is this? Weenie Hut Jr.? Absolutely oh, disgusting. Oh, how the times have changed. So, add ons have. and the community surrounding it. Number 10 on our list. And coming in at number nine, we have streamers. Over the years, okay. the realm of gaming has transformed. Okay. Back then, when I played 12 hours a day, people would just make fun of me. But today, there's a whole industry designed around playing video games well, they and make fun of me too. over them. It's These streamers new. are looked at as gods in whatever game they play, and yep. they have whole communities at their beck and call. Where they play, their fans play, and it'll have a notable effect on whatever server they decide to we play like on. We like Fortnite! 
that was me trying to recruit everybody for the Arathi Highlands battle last night or the, the other day. And this is everybody in Stormwind and I was up there flossing and nobody gave a fuck. I actually saw a video about this recently by a guy named we Classic watched Winds, and he made some really good points, I thought. Looking to become a scepter bearer when the Ankaraj war effort starts? Not on my server. You'll essentially be racing a streamer and his hundreds yep. of fans helping yep. him grind through it. Seeing cues to get into your server? That Screenshot dirty streamer applied. must be playing again. The completely pure and unsullied trade chat is now being spammed Poggers. with Twitch memes? Thanks, streamer. Uh, I hate to Poggers. snake a mining node from him and are now getting harassed by their crazy fans? Thanks, yep. streamer. Yep. You have a small wiener? Thanks, streamer. Yep. Or, I mean, <clears throat> well, maybe you're on a PvP server and you decide to get back at him by ganking okay. him, but you can't get past his personal 24-7 escort. Or maybe you just happen to be leveling in the same zone as him and you can't get a single cactus apple to save your life. No or problem. maybe your server is dying because the streamer quit and all of their fans joined him. And it goes on and on. I wonder Check what's going to happen with that. Subject interests you like, it's I, like I actually, actually, I do wonder what's going to happen with that. Like, I'll, I'll pause that and talk about it. Because, like, what if, like, somebody who's, like, a really, really big streamer starts playing on a server, and then they quit that server? And, like, Darkspear. Like, that's actually what happened with Darkspear, right? Because, like, Swifty, like, whenever he stopped, like, I, didn't he transfer off of Darkspear or something? Or I, I forgot what it was. And, like, that server went from being, like, that was where everything was happening to where that was where nothing was happening. And it was insane. Just because of like one person. Good. You better I'll never have it linked quit. in the description. Don't worry. Don't take I this as whining, by the way. I don't have anything against streamers. If they're bringing new blood to the scene, it's actually good for the game. And they have the right to do whatever they want, just like everyone else. And a lot. Out of the times, I think the problems are caused more the by funny the part is you're doing it right now. Themselves. What do you mean? But still, it's substantial. You're reacting enough, right now. A thing it, so it's a it's a release. it's a joke it's inside of spot on this list, what is actually happening. Oh, come on, man. And coming in at number what are you going to stop reacting bugs, to shit, dude? The servers are down. Exploits. Anything unintended really can go into this spot. This was something that was confirmed by Blizzard various times. The most recent being their update with itemization, where they made mention of Ragnaros only getting killed. Dude. You know what? You know what? Fuck you, McConnell. You wanna you wanna farm gear all day. He left the channel. He left the fucking channel. He's listening to the stream. Listen to this, McConnell. You farm what? you farm gear all fucking day and night. Yeah, all that's right. fucking day and night. And that's you right. duel me, and you that's know right. I won't expect you, and you win and you talk shit. That's right. <laughs> I fucking love classic, hey, man. Why don't you shut the fuck up, okay? You had the beta two days more I than to, I did. I, I had to take time you off, man. All this th oh, you had to. Okay. Sure, what? you. I know what you do off stream, okay? And it ain't that fucking important, okay? Trust me. Don't trust them, guys. It's very, very important. I had an extremely important meeting I had to go to yesterday that lasted all night long, okay? So keep that in mind. I, I didn't have time to play. I don't think anybody believes you go all night long, buddy. Okay, not anymore. To a glitch with one of his abilities. If you wiped on him, sometimes he wouldn't reset properly for the next attempt, and he'd lose access to his Lava Burst spell, making the fight much easier, which resulted in some guilds killing him prematurely. And they also brought up the infamous pre-nerf Cthune, I bet people who was could deemed kill him. unkillable by the player base, assuming I the bet best people gear could kill him and now. perfect play. 100%. These unintended quirks didn't stop the raids, though. Putting game exploits aside, we also had things such as wall walking. Up until patch 2.4, oh, when yeah. up against a wall, 
players could sometimes stick to it and yeah. reach places developers happened had to that? impossible to reach. Some classic examples would be the old Mount Hygel in Kalimdor. We're and going there today. Airport in Dunmoreau. We to are going there two. today, by the way. I want to say there that. It was right. also a short while where players could get an extra talent point, making it possible to get both their 31 point and 21 point talents. That's a Pat in Warrior PvP trees. video right there. I remember that Warriors in particular were pretty ridiculous because they could get both Mortal Strike and Death Wish. No, no, they weren't ridiculous. And this even includes things such as stability. Ridiculous. Now, I can't predict the future. Who knows how the launch will go, but the hardware, of course, has improved tremendously over the years. Okay. This should result in less lag in general for the average player, and less server downtime, which was all too common back then. The servers That's went good. under maintenance every Tuesday, as it does today, but they'd be down for several hours if you were lucky. Sometimes they ran into issues, and it took them days, and the forums were always a sight to behold. Yep. People threatening to quit, demanding refunds. I actually think this shit is so funny because if you go on the forums today, it's the same posts. Blizzard is cheating its customers. Warriors are too overpowered. Viewing blue responses needs to be easier. Can we get some official definition? Or, yeah, def uh, definition. Yeah, definition. It, it's been like 15 years. The, the forums are exactly the same, saying the exact same things. Losing job because of WoW? Hey, there it is. But except this time around, it's people that actually work on the game. It's kind of a bad joke, but unfortunately, it's not a fucking joke, so I'm going to make it anyway. Fucking Blizzard firing people. Uh, uh, communities, managers. like this. Can you believe that, dude? Too soon? I don't know, man. It got Fucking so bad ridiculous. that they actually started to hand out free game time to players if yep. it was down long enough. I've gotten a lot of one-day credits. it's not all on Blizzard's end as well. This was still the dark ages of the internet for a lot of people. Now that I've gotten on the internet, I'd rather be on my computer than doing just about anything. It's really cool. The internet True. gave us a whole world of exciting new possibilities. Porn. So I guess this is a story of how it changed our lives. Maybe Fuck it will yeah, too, with the kid's guide to the internet. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. <laughs> you see Mad Season added that fucking thing? That one wasn't actually on there. He added that. That was actually really funny. We're talking AOL online levels, where if your mom got on the phone, you'd be kicked off in the middle of a boss fight, or fapping to erotic pictures that... We were the first, my, my house was the first house to have internet on my whole street. Out of all my friends, I had internet and no one else did. And you know what that meant? Everyone would come over to my house to watch porn on the weekends whenever my mom was asleep. It was like, and like everybody, we had like this one rule where you had to use the bathroom everybody it's like if you had to pee or anything because you couldn't do it while we were watching <laughs> it, it was like man wait oh my god this fucking thing boots this fucking shit is bullshit but this like that shit was fucking amazing like we did it all day dude we even looked up porn on new grounds like oh my god okay all right, all right. or fapping to erotic pictures that took five minutes to load yep you better hope that most of the action was in the top half, or you'd be screwed. So, it's a rather broad brush here, but okay. most of the bugs, glitches, or otherwise unintended quirks of the game won't be seeing a return in official classic. That makes sense. And moving on to number seven, we have the community. Look at them all! Now, I think the community Holy aspect shit. will be largely similar to how it was during classic Fuck in yeah, its basic Will. form. And what I mean by that Hell is yeah, that most will. of the tools that sort of diluted it are absent, save for the limited Look layering, that, more on that in a bit, but the leveling is tougher, yeah. and thus the player interaction that's a is encouraged. Yes, that's for and there's the, no uh, dungeon, the nor raid finder, thus player interaction is encouraged. And there's no mob sharing, thus player interaction is encouraged. And there's no cross-realm grouping, which means you'll only see the people who are on your server. So Yo, I actually just thought of that. That's completely fucking true. The mob tagging and like being able to share mob tags with other people, Blizzard's intention was to make it more social, and so you would help other people, 
but it's actually made things less social because that way people will just tag the mob and walk by and they'll never take the time to group and coordinate and interact with each other. That's actually insane. I've never even thought of that. What the fuck? Now you have a reputation, nice either positive fair. or negative, yeah. and consequences to your actions. The tools are there, but a simple fact of life is that people change. Yep. It's nearly 14 years since the World of Warcraft has released, and we're in a new generation, and the way that people conduct themselves has changed as well. Voice programs are now free to everyone, whereas back then, it was a luxury, and only the most dedicated I had guilds speak. would own one to coordinate raids. Yep, I had, I had those too. Codex that made everyone sound like robots. Holy shit, okay, man. Guys. So, Ragnaros basically has two phases. This is completely inaccurate because there's no uh, game cam down here, there's no watermark, and there's also no uh, Fraps website on the top, so we automatically know this is not a real vanilla WoW video. The sun's come out and... Uh, everyone needs to get over unregistered hypercam too. And uh, we need to alien down. We do have an alien mana burn. Typing in the and notepad with desktop capture. Now we have Discord, where with one click of a button, people can create, invite, or join a free and lightweight program to quickly and easily chat with fellow group or raid members. Gone are the days where guild websites were mandatory, and you were required to fill out an application to join or read a lengthy guild charter Fuck as yeah, if it dude. was a job interview or something. Dude, I used to love this shit. Like, straight up, like, I loved having, like, guild websites and guild interviews. I used to do guild interviews for my guild. This was actually one of my favorite parts of the game. Like, my favorite parts of WoW aren't even WoW. They're what comes out of WoW. And, like, all the social interactions and, like, the hierarchies and the structure in it and, like, all of that kind of stuff. Like, that's my favorite part of the game. I, it's, like, the, the bosses, the PvP, I don't really give, I mean, like, I, it's cool, right? But uh, it's really about having, like, I don't know, man. I just think it's so cool that there's, like, a completely different world out there with, like, completely different social expectations. And it's, like, almost an alternate parallel dimension to, like, the real life. And, I don't know, I just think it's really cool. That's what I've always really liked about video games and like online MMOs. I'm sure you'll still see this it's kind stuff of like here a, and there, uh, post -apocalyptic but absolutely, society. it'll be much more rare. Compared Look at to all back that. Then. And going past that, oh though, my God. people's knowledge of the game will be greater, and they'll be more skilled, and thus less likely to request aid from other players compared to our first time through. There'll be a large group of returning players, I'm sure. That's sort of the target audience of the game. Can I read it? And I think the community <laughs> will be much more tight knit compared to say the current game. The environment to foster it is true. in place. There's just that unavoidable stuff, such as knowledge and skill, that'll have an effect on the community and how people interact with each other. At number six, we true. have a combo here, and that's all of the confirmed minor systems. Well, it doesn't feel right to call them minor, but whatever. That's a lot. This will be the stuff such as the 1.12 Altric Valley, and the 1.12 Talents and Class Balance, the Pseudo Loot Trading, no progressive itemization, and sharding for high population areas. I wanted to include all of this into one part, because I just went over these in my What oh, We Know So Far demo. video, so I don't want to Fuck overlap yeah. too much here, and there's really not a whole lot to say about them anyways. I have that same They're shirt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear that shirt next stream. I think something worth noting is that they do have an effect on the overall balance of the game. The 1.12 talents in the Molten Core, the 1.12 versions of items. Ooh. Honestly, in terms of balance, that's a I big think these sword right there. I'm, the I'm, a, I'm gonna get that first. Some of the other things coming up on this list, but they're there. And as for layering, although limited, it will have some effect on the community. Like maybe we won't see that absolute chaos on launch uh, where everyone is fighting over one boar. I think that we're still gonna see that. Like we're still gonna see it. Like the layering, I don't feel is gonna have any sort of a meaningful. It's not going to create any meaningful change in the launch experience. Now, I hope, I mean, like, maybe this is just hopeful thinking or wishful thinking. But I don't feel like it will because there's just going to be so many people playing the game. So, sort of combining these all together, I have my number six on my list. Getting into the nitty gritty, though, at number five, we have the phase schedule instead of the patch cycle. We of course had 12 major content patches for Mr. vanilla 1.1 to 1.12, and also including the more minor patches for the little stuff like class balance, yep, and of also course. bug fixes, and of item course. rebalancing, and so on. 
Each one of these incrementally introduced more and more features and systems and evolved the game to its ultimate 1.12 it's state. Ability? Yeah, it is. In this patch, they finally introduced dungeon caps, so you couldn't bring 40 people to run through them anymore. Fucking sucks. And in this one, they added the Stranglethorn Vale fishing tournament. Oh. Or maybe they linked the auction houses and this one. For the re-release, however, the way they're delivering the content is quite different. Instead of opting for a six-phase schedule I think and they're sticking doing with right. the most major game I, I still updates do. to mark each one, I'm very confident. it's pretty close and it has the most major stuff covered, but it's not exact. Raid releases, the PvP system, battlegrounds, yep. a selection of profession recipes, and so yep. on. Everything else, however, such as the class balance and itemization, will be in their 1.12 state right from the get-go, which will be Oh, wait, shit, the I didn't mean to click that. That's totally my bad. Uh, oh, oh, I fucked up there. Okay, where was it? It's like right here, right? Yeah, I was just, I was gonna pause. And I, I was gonna pause and say something, but I forgot, because this messed me up. Such as the class balance and itemization. Will be itemization, that's right. So itemization, obviously, like, there are certain items that are, like, really, really good at the end of the game, like blue items that are, like, outpacing raid items, which is kind of a weird dynamic to have, and it shouldn't necessarily be in the game, but I think Blizzard just opted to do that because it would be simpler for players. And while it is unfortunate, it's also uh, just kind of a reality. Press the space bar? No, that's going to make me jump. I don't want to jump. 1.12 state right from the get-go, which will certainly have a large impact on how the game plays. So, the phase schedule, number 5 on our list. And coming in at number 4, we have Stagnation. As far as we know right yeah. now, Blizzard has no yeah. plans of updating the game to its Burning Crusade release, or emulating the cycle of previous expansions, meaning that once we get through all of the phases, and once we clear through next Ramus, you've quote, beaten the game if there is such a thing for an MMO. I love how everybody just assumes that like everybody's gonna beat Nax. Y you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, once you beat Nax, like just assuming that you're gonna be in a raiding guild for that long, that you're gonna get all the way up to 60, that you're gonna farm out all the resistance gear, that you're gonna do the reputations, that you're gonna do the attunements, you're gonna do all these fucking things, right? And then, oh, well, yeah, after you complete, you know, what's equivalent to a thousand hours of gameplay, well, then there's no more vertical progression. Wow, I guess the game sucks, right? Give me a fucking break. Most people are not going to clear Max because they won't have the time. I think most people that set aside the time and try to will probably clear Max. But that's a lot of time. That's a lot of investment. I don't know if that's going to happen. Recently, there was mention of possibly bringing in new content, but there's conflicting information about that, and it's potentially years away, so I don't want to give too much credit to it right now. But this is another highly Wait, so let me read this content. If fans have a desire for something, it would be absolutely be considered. We're certainly not planning to do that today. But if people want more, we can talk about that. Honestly, that's the best answer they can give. Like that, that is the smartest, best answer they can give. We'll see what's going to happen. Like if they do something like OSRS, I am just so worried about them messing it up, man. Like I'm so worried. I don't know if they will. I hope they won't. But I'm so worried that they will. Yeah, this this does sound like me. So w w let's talk about. W w let's see. It would absolutely be considered. That's a non-promissory thing. That, that that's no non-committal. We're certainly not planning to do that today, right? So that means that it still leaves the option for people that really want it to interpret that as it might happen and still give them hope. So there's another non-committal statement. But if people want more, we can talk about that. Another non-committal statement. So this post, this this statement could have been made completely by me. Like, I, I, I totally could have done this right here. But there's conflicting information about that, and it's potentially years away, so I don't want to give too much credit to it right now. Okay. But this is another highly debated subject of the game. Yeah, we talk about One it every fucking day. One side says that they can play Classic forever, and you can always start new alts, or just turn towards PvP if you feel like you've outgeared the PvE. Ooh, I like that quote. And the other side says that MMOs live and die on updates and content patches, and with that eventual stagnation, what's keeping players playing? I consider myself part of the former crowd, but just the knowledge of the game eventually stagnating will certainly have an effect on how players conduct themselves. The perfect example I can give you is the timeline between Nextramus and the Burning Crusade. Okay. As I mentioned, I rated fairly hardcore back then, 
We cleared through all of the Molten Core, Anixia, and the Blackwing Lair, of course, and all of the AQ-40 save Cthulhu. Wow. And as for Nixramus, we did all of the entry-level stuff, Holy all of the shit. spider wing, and maybe like one boss in the remaining three wings. Damn! We didn't That's get super big. far in it, because fewer and fewer people were showing up every week. Part of this was just because Sounds of the like general retail. burnout, and the rest of it was because of the Burning Crusade. Yep. Everyone knew that this new amazing expansion was right around the corner, and it was common knowledge that the level cap would be increased. Thus, any gear that we get now really doesn't have any longevity. So it was sort of like, what's the point of grinding our skulls against a brick wall if in a few months we'll be replacing them with greens? What's the point of the ring? What's the point of farming out Titan Forges and raid gear if in just a couple of months we'll be replacing it with normal mode raid gear from the next, next raid? I mean, they literally do. I mean, they. The same thing that created apathy in players over 10 years ago, like 15 years ago at this point, they're doing it again. But instead of this time, a new expansion coming out that people can at least be excited for, it's some new dipshit raid that's going to be cleared on the first day by anybody with a group that has half a brain. I mean,. It's actually so funny that Blizzard made this mistake and now they make them they made this mistake and now they make that exact same mistake every five months. 14 grind if all of the gear will be worthless when the Burning Crusade launches. I actually farmed out as much myself, of that as I could. My guild so and I had many others, I'm sure. It's completely to sort of coast time. their way through the rest of vanilla and recharge their batteries for our adventures into the outland. So, with no Burning Crusade, players no longer have that excuse, and they will eventually get the best items for every slot. That's gonna be me. And have no need to raid other yep, than that's just me right for the there, 100%. Bit, which may or may not be enough for them. The literal god. So, Stagnation, number four on our list. And coming in at number three, we have knowledge and access to information. I mentioned earlier how yeah. in terms of balance, yeah. I think things such as the 1.12 class balance and itemization are just, just a drop a reality. in the ocean, that they're it's eclipsed just by other things in this list. This is one of them. So first, let's address the player's personal knowledge of the game. The game, in one form or another, has been out for 14 years. Just talking MMOs in general here, back then, it was a hot and trending genre. World of Warcraft was the first MMO for many people, and sometimes even their first game, period. Back then, a very small percentage of people had maybe a few year precedent to work with, but now we have millions and millions with a 15 year precedent, and it'll greatly affect how we actually play it. This time, we know that spirit kind of sucks, and is mostly used for just leveling, or that hybrid specs aren't all that powerful. We know- I, I think that's- well, actually, well, that warriors are the best tanks, and we, we knew know that just back how powerful then too. weapon skill is, and that warlocks are hindered by the debuff limit, or yep. what graces go best with what classes, and people will roll different classes accordingly to suit their needs. And, and I, I just want to say right now is that I think that a lot of the reasons why people think things are undertuned in Classic right now is because of this, is because people are just so much better at playing the game now, especially the people that are playing beta. Like, obviously, whenever you actually release Classic out to the general player base, you're going to have Billy the dipshit that runs in there and aggros three kobolds in the mines for two hours and then quits the game. But whenever you actually have the good players, the people that have played the game for, like, 15 years or something like that, they know everything about the game. Maybe they're not rank one raiders, but they understand the game on a very fundamental level, and they have that muscle memory to where they just know what buttons to press, and they have that instinct of, okay, let's do this and do that. Because of those things... I think that players have gotten so good that classic is people are perceiving classic as being bugged because of how much better players are now than they used to be. Like that, that's generally the way I feel. Okay. Now, if the mob scaling and like the elite damage and all of this other stuff is actually true, and it is fucked up, but you know, I, I don't know. The fuck is this? DC'd again? Okay, just a minute. Let me finish the video. Game activities. Players know every single nook and cranny of every single nook and cranny of the game. It's impressive how yep. knowledgeable some people are, and even if you don't know much yourself, yeah, there's going to be your guildmates and fellow raid members. 
Back then, I made a dwarf paladin because they were just swole. Whoa, look at the muscles on this guy. He's a big boy. He must do a lot of damage. Of course he I didn't does. know that it was all just looks, and at the end game, I'd be spamming 5 minute buffs on 40 people for 5 hours a night. Today it's, okay, stone form. Well, I'll be PvPing, so that's why I'll pick him. But it just on the makes other sense. hand, humans yeah, get that weapon skill, which smarter. is really good for PvE. Hmm. They're just a lot smarter. And even taking a step outside of the game, where may you find this information, you may ask? Well, at youtube.com forward slash show, of course. YouTube's number one spot for your favorite clinically depressed monotone YouTube user telling you how to play a game that was released 14 years ago. Hey. hey. On a serious note, it's though, the best game YouTube out there. didn't exist until 2005, and even still, it would be a while before World wow, of Warcraft Rouge. videos would become a thing, let alone raid or dungeon guides. Oh, it's beautiful, man. You were lucky if you'd find anything other than Thank a 240p keyboard turning clicker PvP video Fuck edited yeah. to the tune of Drowning Pool or Slipknot. That's all Back you then, need. We didn't have ironclad sexy red devils providing guides on various aspects of the game. No, the best that we got were old GeoCities hosted text guides, often riddled with vague or otherwise inaccurate descriptions of Nobody how to knew what the fuck they were counter. doing. That's basically and what he's saying. If you were lucky, Nobody had any possibly idea. explained through voice comms by your raid leader, trying in vain to guide 39 people away from Johannes' reign of fire. Okay. Lenny, you know what to do. You did great last time. Same as you, Omni. So make a pull just Here we go. past that one. Here we go. Hunters, stay ready to make a pull. And uh, good luck, everybody. Let's, let's get this bugger down. You know what my guild used There's to do? Fight right there. The warlocks would drop rain of fire during the fight Here we to go. mess with everyone. They were identical, so people would always scramble out of the way and wonder why it seemed to be following them. <laughs> so there's a tip for all of you troublemakers out there. That's a really good idea. The best I'm gonna we do had, that. honestly, was Thoughtbot. No, he's smart. Which is like the less hot cousin of your crush. Wowhead only really took off during the Burning Crusade, I want to say. It was like rap. I think we take for granted just how useful I it and on other BC. similar sites can be. A complete database of the entire game, and with text guides for pretty much anything you can imagine, and also user comments to fill in the blanks. We live in the information age, where any question is answered with a simple search. And with the game now having a 14 year history behind it, it's all been documented for our convenience. I it's mean, we did have the internet back then. Stuff like this did exist, but not at this level, simply due to the game's decade long history and sites like YouTube and Wowhead hitting their stride. It's not just that, it's people's job, literally. It's people's fucking job to teach you how to play the game. This is what they do, that's their job. They're like, hey, I'm gonna make these videos and do this stuff so I can make money. Like imagine if back in the day, there were people whose job it was to make videos about Molten Core. There would be millions of people doing that and it would be completely like, I don't know, so I can make money, yeah. Like I think that's a massive component. Like people, people really kind of underestimate how much YouTube and everything has changed the way that games work now. Because like now, most people don't even like they don't. You don't go to GameSpot, GameStop, and look at the cover of the uh, of like the jewel case and say, "Do I want this game or not?" You go on YouTube and you listen to some raving person who jump cuts every three seconds tell you why the game sucks or it's great, and that's just completely different. And it's the same with learning how to play games too. So knowledge and access to information at number three. Fuck yeah. And coming in at number two, we have skill. He's talking about This me. really goes hand in hand with knowledge, I think. But yep. I think there are some key distinctions that warrants it its own spot here. You can have all the knowledge in the world and read up on anything, but putting it to use Very is true. a different story entirely. Like, I know the proper form for a squad. I read up on it, and I watched a lot of videos, but I can't even lift the bar. What gives? World of Warcraft hooked millions of players, and many of them have is been playing Coleman? ever since then. God Not only damn. do they have the knowledge on how to gear their character or position themselves during boss encounters, they've been actually doing it, and it's something you can translate very easily. Oh, I, I don't if even you're like able watching to beat that Jaina clip. Proudmoor in the Battle of Dazzler Lore, I'm pretty sure you can stay out of Johannes' Reign of Fire. I don't or know if about that. at all within the past 10 years, yep. you're probably familiar with the tank swapping mechanic with the stacking debuffs. Yeah, probably. As I said, we all sucked back then. It seemed like 90% of the players would be keyboard turners, clickers, or backpedalers. 
Even See, I'm just trying to give you guys an authentic vanilla experience. That's why I play the game that way. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I do think, actually, I, I genuinely think that at least tanking in dungeons in, uh, in vanilla, unless you're tanking a Mythic plus 20 or something, is harder than tanking dungeons in BFA. Uh, threat is a much bigger mechanic. You have to plan things out more. Your knowledge of the dungeon is more important. You have to keep track of a lot more things. I, I and like, listen, guys, like I tanked, listen, I tanked server first challenge modes uh, for fucking Mists of Pandaria. I, I was one of the first people to get gold and wad. I, I mean, like, I, I, I know what I'm talking about here with tanking. I'm not SCO, okay? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not SCO. But I'm good enough to at least have an opinion on this, okay? And I, I've got a lot of, uh, I, I've done tanking my whole time. I think that it's harder in Classic. I do. Just because of the limited resources and everything else. This goes benched. Okay, well, whoever you want. Salute back. If there were rank 14 Grand Marshals and High Warlords, it didn't matter. Everyone would desperately try to keyboard turn their enemies into frame as they click rend, and all with that ugly default UI. Spell batching was something that only 1% of the player base knew about, I don't and think only 1% really of those players had the knowledge and skill to build strategies around it, whereas today it's it pretty common knowledge, I think. In, in especially BC, considering people that it out. I think most of the people who will be playing Classic is that hardcore crowd that are yep. heavily invested into the game. I don't think that's true. You ever try to help your parents navigate to their email? No matter how many times you explain it, and no matter what instructions you give, vocal or written, you're labeled as a literal god of computers because you know how to get to google.com, and as you navigate the ever-growing number of AdWord toolbars to load up their email for the hundredth time, you wonder oh, how they god. managed to even start their computer to begin with. These are your main <laughs> healers in classic. My dad, it's been 10 years I've been trying to teach him how to open up the task manager and close a program. He still don't fucking know. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take or anything. He still has no fucking idea. And I, I have to go over there and fix it. <laughs> like, I, I don't even know what to say. There was one time, I'm going to tell a quick story, okay, for this because I think it's really funny. My dad wakes me up in the morning. Or I actually, I, I hear the door, like, open up really, really fast. I'm like, wait, what the fuck is going on? And I look at my phone. I had a flip phone at this time. And I had, like, 25 missed calls from my dad. And I thought to myself, I'm like, what the fuck? Did the house burn down? Like, what's going on? My dad literally fucking pushes my door open, kicks my door open. He's like, wake up. You didn't answer your phone. And I'm like, well, what the, what's going on, dad? He's like, and then at this moment, I actually thought that my dad was just, he had finally just had enough about me not having a job and playing World of Warcraft all day, that he was going to kick my fucking ass out of bed at 7 a.m. and tell me to go up to Hobby Lobby and put in a new fucking application and make sure that I talked to the manager whenever I wear a polo shirt. So I talked to my dad about this, and then slowly I realized that actually it has nothing to do with me at all. It has to do with his computer. And my dad is extremely impatient, and he was trying to copy-paste uh, an application or some sort of a file on his computer, and it didn't work in the first three seconds. So his response to that was to click the same button about a thousand times. So after, all the, uh, after the computer started registering all of the processes, um, I had to, uh, it, it would just continue putting more and more of this application. So, like, imagine having your desktop where there's... <laughs> There's like a notepad document that just appears on it like every five seconds because my dad just kept clicking it and it was trying to process all the times that my dad clicked the button. So my dad finally asked me, he's like, okay, get the fuck over to my house right now. And I'm like, okay, fine. Give me 10 minutes and I'll drive over there. So I drive over there and uh, it's not happening anymore. And he keeps telling me that it's a sorcerer's apprentice, which if you guys don't know what that is, it's like a Disney movie. Where there's like a broom that cleans things up and the broom turns into two brooms and then it turns into four brooms and eight brooms and you know 16 brooms 32 bro a lot of brooms all right so he says the sorcerer's apprentice is on my computer i go over to the house i guess the movie ended because he's not there anymore i restart the computer i haven't said a single word to him it stopped happening and he asked so i'm like it's fixed he's like what'd you do I said nothing. I went home. I went back to bed. Later on that day, my dad standing next to my mom, having my mom look up Sorcerer's Apprentice Virus.
they didn't find anything. <laughs> Never happened again. I, 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 my dad, like, I, I really, it, it's actually hilarious how, how many different ways my dad doesn't understand computers. Like, one, w he got a garage door opener, garage door opener that had more than two buttons on it. He hits the wrong button all the time. But now he's got, he's got a new one now, so he doesn't need to worry about that. It's just a one button thing. So he can play a rat paladin with it, basically. Okay, let's get back to the video. Dick. These were the people who held your life in their hands. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe that's a bit of an over-exaggeration. It's not. But it's not as far from the truth than it's you not think. not at all. You can't just erase 14 or 15 years of experience and these raids being out for that time. And before you say, well, just blowing through them for transmog runs is way different. People aren't actually raiding them. But is it really? Well, my response is, oh yes, they have. Private servers have existed for years, yep. and they're even quite popular. Here are just a few screenshots what? of some in their final moments before they were shut down. Oh, that's the style. can't even I'm find cities sure. as packed in the current oh my game. God. And all of these people have been raiding the Molten Core, Anixia, the Blackwing Lair, wow. and so on for years, many times over. And they're making up a significant portion. Of Private servers aren't accurate. They're harder than retail was. Like, literally, even the people that make the private servers say that they overtune the bosses to make up for the fact that uh, that the, the coding might not be perfect. Yeah, they're actually even harder. It's insane. People, like, Molten Core is going to fall over. Like, actually, I'm going to talk about that afterwards. But uh, remind me about Molten Core in, in, on, on week one. Remind me about that. I'll talk about that after I finish the video. Of those that are going to play Official Classic. It's pretty insane, actually. It's like one of those How Where's Waldo portraits. Uh, and most of them are raid videos. How many hundreds of thousands of hours are cumulatively invested into people. this one screenshot? Well, like, Again, even if you don't play them yourself, these will be your if raid. If those people invested that same amount of time into medical research, we'd have cured cancer. But those epic mounts? Hey. Hey. They're pretty nice. Members. And in the case of Nexramus, even retail players got some serious real-time rating here because it was, serious of course, re-released in the Wrath yeah, okay. of the Lich King expansion. Okay. Okay, so, dude. just like how you can't erase knowledge, you can't erase skill. I think that there'll still be some challenge, don't get me wrong, but mainly in the later tiers. Probably Nexramus and AQ40. I mean, pre-nerf Cthune was unkillable. A little bit of BWL, too. That. And like while Chromag we're probably might getting be a little, the nerf little version, bit difficult. I doubt that he'll be a cakewalk. But at least for the earlier tiers, the rate at which these guilds down these raids, I believe, will be vastly accelerated. Don't like people talk MC on week, week one now? Release, in private servers? the same day for the top guilds. I mean, people who are actually good at the game were 10 manning in Nixia in 2005, no less. And they one were, year later, they three with 1.12 talents and Nexramus gear, yep. it was actually four man, if you can believe that. I thought it was three. And today, I watching nearly a night 15 years or... later, I think skill will play a major factor in the game. And it earns the number two spot in our list. So, what can possibly top that, you may ask? Okay. What's this mysterious number one game-changing thing in classic World of Warcraft? Good computers. That's right. No blob shadows. Or, I mean, that first-time experience. There's just something magical of entering this huge world. And not just for World of Warcraft, but the MMO genre as a whole. You don't know how many zones there are professions, talents, what spells you'll get, yep. if there's PvP, yep. or what the max level is, or if there even is one. You don't know what dungeons are, nor raids. You literally just stepped into this giant world with something to discover around every corner. I know this sounds similar to the knowledge section, but I think there's a distinction to be made here. There's a difference between not having a good knowledge of something and your literal first time experiencing it. And MMOs are this pretty unique true. in that regard, since I, I, it's such I a huge world this. filled with so many people, and especially taking into account that World of Warcraft was the first MMO for many. No longer are you restricted to that single player Is this world with your typical RPG at the time, and experiencing wow. that for the first time was pretty overwhelming. That's the word I'm looking for. Overwhelming. 
If you've played any MMO today, it's nearly impossible to get this feeling again, I think, because you never know what more overwhelming about than and what to expect. Let's be honest. You truly can't recreate any moment in life, really. If you have prior knowledge or experience, you're doomed because you lose that magic of things just happening in the moment. Like the first time you rode a bike, your first kiss, your first strip club, or your first concert. And it'll absolutely be true for a classic World of Warcraft. I've never been to a strip it'll club. It'll still be a great experience, never. and I'm going to savor every last moment of it. I think they're disgusting. But once you open that bottle, so to speak, it's open. These moments are special, and the people, places, and things tied to them are just as special because we know Fuck that yeah, they, they can never be truly replicated. Fuck yeah, they are. So, that's my personal never, top 10 list that of things that'll be different in the recreation of classic World of Warcraft. Some of them are in Blizzard's control, and some of them aren't. I know there's always the changes versus no changes argument, and the purpose of this video isn't to add fuel to that fire. I just thought that it was an interesting oh, subject, and I wanted to share what I was thinking about. Even through all of this, I'm still extremely hyped for the game, and I'll be playing day one of course, but I'm also realistic of what to expect and what not to expect. If anything, dude, I hope I that this video that should lighten some things that maybe you didn't think about. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. That was a good motherfucking ass video, dude. Like, let's be honest. I love that video. Holy shit, man. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's God video. damn, dude. I was just, I, I was getting hyped just soon. listening to that. Damn, man. I'll, I'll link the video in chat, okay? This is the one that we just watched. Watch the MC. Yeah, just give me the, give me a minute for the Molten Core thing, okay? Uh, just a second here. Like, I, I just, I, I really, really like this video. It, it's fucking amazing. And I hope that more people actually start doing that more often. And, like, you know, we start seeing more videos like this. I need to start making a few videos. My goal, guys, is to have the Legacy of Asmongold released before Classic. And I need to start working on that, like, today. And so I have everything ready to go. It'll probably be, like, an hour-long video. But we'll see what's going to happen. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sub to him? Oh, this is my alt account. I'm not really sub to anybody on this account. Uh, I mean, I, I give him a sub. I mean, might as well. You know, you guys can follow my uh, my example if you want. But still, I mean, uh, Asmongold reacts to Asmongold reacting to paint dry. <sighs> yeah. Look, man, that's not... We need to talk about... Sol no, we don't. We really actually don't need to talk about Sylvanas. Like, everybody knows what it's going to be. Sylvanas is the new Lich King. And somehow, it's not bad. Okay? Because she's a girl, and Sylvanas can do nothing wrong. You know, playing remote, should I start? Yeah, Molten Core Week 1. So let me talk about that, okay? Uh, just one second. Talking about the Lich King? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the God of Azeroth. What was this here? Um, 